So the ambulance pulls up. They go, they're in there 10 minutes, whatever they're doing. I don't know. I'm up on the roof watching. All of a sudden, he comes out in a stretcher. He's turbinized, meaning his head is bandaged up, <laughs> the jaw. They sit him up in the ambulance with the doors op open. Moultrie walks by. He goes down the street like he, Joe, average Joe Citizen looks in the ambulance and keeps walking. So he sees the guy's turbinized sitting up, and they're, like, working on him, playing the whole act. You know? uh, he wants to make sure that he got his money's worth, right? Exactly. So – he, he goes off. Now, the biggest problem we had of all this, we knew Moultrie was going to call around to hospitals and to find out where this guy went to verify it even further. So we had to get a hospital to admit this guy in a computer, meaning that when he called the hospital and, put, and said the name that the attending, uh, you know, person at the desk would, oh, yeah, he's here. That's a big deal. Yes, you know, yes. it's a false admission. We we went to several hospitals and we were all turned down. You so know, who, 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 did you, who did you deal with to do that? The head of security? Uh, the head of security first who put us out in touch with the administrator, whoever was responsible for something like Usually that. Usually you'd have to go through like risk management or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Of but course this was only a phone call. Yeah, so. they would be afraid that they would be sued over this or something, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I guess, a general... I know, how, I know how hospitals think, you know? Yes, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so uh, we end up getting, I believe, the NYU on 34th Street to play ball with us. Okay? So the, the whole thing's set up. We give him uh, the guy, Sean Constantine's name, you know, whatever. They put him in the system. Now we're up on Moultrie's phone. Uh, well, right afterwards, he called Schachter and said, basically, it's done. Guy's on his way to the hospital. He's talking to him as he's hanging out in the street. Right. So we're up on that call. Two detectives are listening to that downtown. Um, so they go to the hospital. Um, well, I'm sorry. They, they drive around the block or somewhere. I don't know where they go. But he starts calling hospitals now. He leaves. He goes home. Now he starts calling frantically to hospitals. Everybody's, nope, nobody by that name, nobody by that name. And then he's, he, start, he started in that neighborhood. I think Metropolitan was the hospital on 96th Street there. Mm -hmm. He started with that hospital and then worked his way all around the city. He's, he even called police uh, looking to say, hey, my uncle, I don't know where he, he was taken away. The neighbors told me by ambulance. I don't know where he went. And everybody's basically slamming the door in his face saying, look, I don't know. You have to call the hospitals. Right, right. So uh, after numerous calls by him to these, you know, uh, police, fire, trying to get answers into hospitals, he hits on NYU. Yep, we have him here. Okay, thank you. Blah blah blah. He calls back Schachter, uh, says it's done. Guy's in the hospital. This is where he is. Um, after this, we uh, I don't know the exact timeline, but we we wind up arresting Norman Schachter. Okay, we wind up arresting him. Um, we do a search warrant on his house. Um, you know, we come up really with nothing. Although there was a couple of dogs, we had to bring ESU with us. His house with it was in, um, uh, I believe, Connecticut. I forgot the name of the town, but it was a pretty affluent town. So we had to go to Connecticut. So I had to go to the local jurisdiction and get a warrant uh, in addition to all warrant, like an amendment of something that they, they required. So the judge up there signed off on it. We had to get their ESU team because uh, there were, you know, we, we surveilled the property. There were dogs on the property in, in like these big fenced in areas and they were big dogs. It was probably the dogs that, want, you know, two of them or one of them that probably attacked uh, Considine in the park because they didn't destroy the dogs. Right. So they were there. So we wind up getting Connecticut PD. All of us are up there and we're going to do this warrant. Um, we wind up doing the, the warrant and um, we don't really come up with anything. We take his computer at the time, uh, which really never. No, I'm sorry, that did come up with the child porn was on his computer. So was he photos. was he a pedophile? He was not. No, this these were just they were amateur. Like there weren't uh, child porn doing sexual acts. They were naked children, pretty much. Okay. So it's not like they were hardcore adult child. They were just kids that were were naked. But in, that's, in, that's also illegal just to upload. Oh, sure. I mean, you're yeah. talking teenagers and 10-year-olds. There were yeah. some photos right. of young kids, you know, laying on their on their stomachs and standing there and, you know, uh, just standing straight up. Yeah, it was, it was pretty uh, pretty bad. You right. Know? 
So, but no, he was not uh, a child. Well, I'm surprised at here. this point you didn't involve another unit and get in getting special victims in Right, there. right. Well, look, don't don't think we didn't think of that. Yeah, let's bring you another know, unit in. We already have 15 units. Let's get Yeah, I mean, the computer, you know, went to, uh, you know, the, the computer. The computer crimes there. units. Yeah, they dissected bring another it. unit in. <laughs> yeah, we brought another unit in. Somebody else is uh, involved now. Yes. But they didn't, uh, they didn't come up with anything hardcore, just the photos that were that were given and uh we had to also you know narcotics you know we had the crack we had like 10 vials of crack God. so uh we went we we wind up arresting him now uh one of the funny things when we arrested him we there was a dick pic in one of the photos right and we're looking at this photo the da and we're looking at we're like you know whose dick that is come on it's got to be Shaktis. Now, he, you know, he had red pubes, right? Oh, yeah. So now we're like, yeah, it's got to be. In other words, a big fuck you to Considine. Not only am I going to do this, but I'm going to stick a picture of my dick to get you, you know, to get you uh, busted, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we, we knew that. That was, you know, that was obvious. So I have to pull him out of the tombs and they want to uh, 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 photograph him. They want to photograph his penis, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now I bring him upstairs to the DA's office. We find a, a small room where the photographer is, this uh, male photographer. I, I had to get a male. Right. And now, you know, and we had to get a warrant, I believe, to do this too. This involved more paperwork going through his attorney, you know, in, in front of a judge, why we want to humiliate this man and, right, right. and take a picture of his privates, you know. So this is all, you know, this is days. This isn't something that's happening quick. No, of course not. So sure, you know, we, we did. Now there was a mole on his uh, genitalia, you know? <laughs> so it was distinct. It was distinctive, you know? It was almost like, I don't know if you ever saw Porky's. I thought you were going to tell me that you did a dick lineup or something, you know? Like they, <laughs> that that would have been... They picked him out, you know? Yeah, well, if you ever saw the movie Porky's, <laughs> do something like that. I know that mole anywhere. <laughs> So uh, that so we bring him into the office. Now it's myself, the photographer, and him. So now you know I'm like, look, take off your clothes. He know he knew why we were there, right. and now we have him sitting on the floor. We have his legs up in the air, and she's god. snapping away. I mean, the humiliation on this oh guy. Oh my god! You know, and she's snapping away. And sure you enough, mean, you mean he is snapping away? I mean, he's snapping away. Right. right. So uh, sure enough, it's it's his. There's no question. You know, put them side by side. A comparison of the photos revealed that it was, in fact, his penis. It was, in fact, his uh, his mm -hmm. penis. So um, I don't know why I started so we, talking like a lawyer. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the lawyer, of course, that he didn't want to do it. They were bitching. You know, are you kidding me? Blah blah blah. This and then outrageous, the like, no. This is outrageous behavior. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it was. Yeah. You, you know, you you're right. It was exactly like that. So um, now, you know, we, we have that. Now we have to get Moultrie, right? So we make, uh, we make Schachter, somehow we get Schachter to call Moultrie to tell him to bring down bail money because his wife was arrested right. for something. So Moultrie comes down to 100 Center Street thinking he's going to bail out Schachter's wife, and we wind up grabbing him in the lobby of 100 and Center just, Street. Just to be here. clear, Moultrie is the dog trainer he's the dog trainer that okay. hired the this guy johnson the parolee yes, yes. To, to carry this, this this gets convoluted we're you know we're detectives and sergeants we're used to these stories and we you know sometimes i'll even write the players down so i don't forget you know right right the audience will keep reminding them who these players are right right exactly um so we wind up getting him, of course, you know, he gives up chapter and say, look, this is this guy approached me and he's paying me money. Now we have payments between those two also, these Western Union uh, payments and uh, phone calls. Why? Like we have him dead to rights, all, you know, all the plays. The, the only one who wasn't involved was Debbie Gamel. She she really wasn't involved with any of this. She knew about it. But she wasn't uh, – she, she wasn't she involved. She didn't do anything that could implicate her into exactly. actually – getting prosecuted for this. Right. Okay. So she, you know, she didn't get arrested uh, during this whole thing. Because uh, actually knowing about it is not a crime. You have to do some overt act. Right. But it's an, if she would have paid for some of it or something, right. it, all came, it all came from, it all came from him. Right. You know? Um, so 
all the players are arrested. Now, you know, we go to trial. They take it to trial. Um, you know, uh, they separated them at trial, of course. And um, Shakta winds up getting 10 years. Wow. 10 years and Moultrie seven. That's a heavy, unbelievable. That's a heavy duty sentence for that. You know, it was, but they, they charged him with a slew of, of crimes from child porn to drug possession to burglary. Um, you know, even though he, he, he didn't go in the apartment, but in essence, it's really a burglary. They went, he, 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 you know, he, uh, enabled them to go in and, and commit a crime, you know, mm -hmm. the undercovers. And, uh, so they charged him with burglary, drug possession, child pornography, possession, assault, uh, conspiracies, you know, things, you know, all now those kind of charges. So they hammered him. This was 10 years that he was sentenced after trial? After trial. Yeah, so he didn't, yeah. he, 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 there was no plea. He took this to trial no. and, and got 10 years. Yeah. And did he have yeah. any? Again. He, wow. I was going to ask you, did he have any kind of criminal history before this? No, he didn't. Nothing. He didn't. No, not that I, not that I remember. No, but um, I believe they made offers, and once again, he thought he was smarter than everyone else. I think. And what yeah. did Shakta do for a living? Uh, I think he was in. Um, he did have a legit. Oh, cleaning, dry cleaning. I think. I think he owned a couple of dry cleaning stores. He owned the stores, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had some. He had some uh, money. I forgot what neighborhood in Connecticut, but they had a nice house. Uh huh. You know. They had a nice house. I'd love to see where they are today if they're still together. <laughs> well, if you get sentenced to 10 years. But they were no big deal. Right. So, um, but they, they did time. You know, they did time. And he did a lot of time. And this is, you know, this is an old, fat, redhead, balding guy um, <laughs> who, who, who wanted to be the tough guy. And really, the reason why he did this was to, to be like, hey, I'll take care of this baby. You know, don't you worry about it. And right. it snowballed right. and snowballed. And uh, a lot of work went into it. I mean, this was over a long amount of time with these wiretaps and all kinds of meets with the undercovers and, you know, and, and Moultrie. And, yeah, it was. Uh, and it really it, uh, blew up in his face. I mean. Uh, it literally, yeah. You know? it, it blew up in his face. I don't think he thought it would have went this far. And it was as serious as uh, a crime you know, when he got locked up, I, you know, he probably thought, oh, you know, they got me for this. But when he looked at all those charges, he forgot about the drugs. He forgot about the burglary. Right. He forgot about the child porn that, hey, I can be charged. I supply child porn. You know what I mean? Like, but he didn't did, think didn't any his, of this. Didn't his attorney explain all of that to him before he thought he was going to, uh, you know, just beat the charges? You you would think so. You would think so. But uh, he, he had a very arrogant uh, personality, you could tell, just by dealing with him. Like, he... He was an arrogant guy. Yeah, you, know, you could you could see it. Um, but I, I listen. He's obviously he's out by now. I'm sure. It's, it's when so he let me ask someone, when he was arrested, mm -hmm. was he? Did he make a statement? No, no. Lawyered up immediately. Oh, he lawyered right up. He so he knew, yeah, he knew the game. He was educated. He was smart. Yeah, he was smart about smart that, enough yeah. to. But, but he did agree to make that call to Moultrie to get him down though with his attorney present. Okay. He did agree to do that. So they must have, I don't remember why, you know, the DA must have made some kind of uh, offer or, or something. We'll get your pizza your first week in prison. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. But at that time, I don't think any offers were on the table or it hadn't gone that far yet, you know? Right. This was just still the beginning of the, uh, of the case. So, um, and the guy, the, the, the victim, mm -hmm. how, did you ever find out? how he did in civil court as far as suing? Did I didn't. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I'm sure he still sued, but, you know, who knows? Who knows? That's something, uh, you know, I'll look yeah, up. You know, he, had, he had some money, the guy. Uh, he did? Oh, yeah, he was exactly. an author. Nice apartment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he wasn't swimming in it, but he, you know, and he was a typical Upper East Sider. He was snooty himself. You know, he, was, <laughs> he was no bargain, but at least at least he, he played ball with us, you know? But, it, you know, it, it was... Yeah getting uh, you know revenge in, in a sense you know to, he, to he was, our audience when um detective hovigem says a typical upper east sider i just give you a little example of that sometimes when the police go to these really ritzy buildings the doorman will say oh would you mind using the service entrance oh and most 
detectives will say, yes, I do mind. I'm coming yeah. through the front door and I'm using the human elevator. Not right. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure your uh, your partner in, in, in on uh, off the cuff, Mark, being the doorman. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he would Mark. probably be the biggest ball breaker. He's that's like, no, you guys can't come through here. That happened. I mean, that used to happen on the Upper West Side too. They would say, oh, sure. "Would you mind taking the service entrance?" Sure. It's happened to me, and like you said, we said, "No, get get out of my way." No, I'm not taking the service. Of course, we're not taking the service entrance. You know, they must, they must get in that, that in their doorman training. You know. If the police or the fire department or anyone who's a civil servant comes to the door, make them use the service entrance. It's all about protecting the building. Our tenants are flat. They're horrified by civil service. Yeah, yeah. It's it's all about protecting the, the building and the tenants from the, you know, the, the law enforcement. I, you know, I remember there was this huge case. And I, I remember, remember the guy uh, – who did like five murders and he murdered the dry cleaning lady in the 19th precinct. Sure. That, the that. only reason why we got him, that was, um, uh, what was his name? I, I worked on that case. We got a, a thumbprint on the outside of the window. Um, of the dry cleaner. Of the dry cleaner. So I, I was in the room when we got the statement, uh, a detective, Mike Charles, uh, did right. a great job. Um, you know, cause that thumbprint meant nothing. It was on the sidewalk side. Well, my only point in bringing that up was that we were canvassing buildings on the Upper West Side. And when we tried to go up to the apartments, a few of the tenants called the doorman and said, do not let the police come up to my apartment. And the apartment overlooked the scene where he bashed a woman almost to death in Central yeah. Park. And we're like, oh, one of your neighbors almost was beaten to death. Yeah. You're unwilling or yeah. unable to allow the police to question to see if you saw anything. Right. Oh, how horrible we're, we're intruding upon your day, you know? Well, Bill, how many times did were we sent back in different homicides on the Upper East Side to canvas the building again and again yeah. and again? And we're knocking on these people. You're like, look, you've been here three times. I didn't see anything different than I told you the first time. And people would get pissed. Oh, yeah. These high rises. I mean, they would get pissed. You know, uh, the smartest man in the police department. Go canvas it again. You know, fill up uh, T. Fill up Pulaski with his checklist. You know, go go canvas again. All right, we already did it. Go do it again. Go do the no answer apartments. Like right, go do the no answers, and then we're bothering the doorman again, and and you know, and then we'd be stepping all over each other. Oh, I thought you did this building. No, I did this building. Blah blah blah. You know, like it was just ridiculous. Police department its own worst enemy sometimes. You know, in in that sense, they they were. I would have been if I was a tenant. Look, you know, stop bothering me. Yeah, leave me alone. I didn't see it. Leave me alone. You're banging on my door. You know, and, and detectives, we don't have any sense of time. Oh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock at night. Let's go re It's a right, Sunday right. night at 10 o'clock. You know, we don't care. We're working, you know, we're working till what? Well, you know? it's, it's the same thing in, in, in East Hall, uh, in the 2-3. Uh, we get a shooting at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. Knocking on people's doors at 3 in the morning. And it's like, or, okay, or a murder right in the hallway or something. And, yeah. you know, we had to do it. We couldn't tell our bosses, oh, we didn't want to wake the people up. They'd be like, what? Right? Right. They had, they had no compassion for the working uh, men, men and women that had to get up the next day. Right. You know, you're banging on there. You know, hey, did you see anything? Did you hear anything? You know, I mean, they're half asleep, first of all. Right. You know, but. And usually, Tom, we tell our audience, most of the time, like 95% of the time, canvases are unfruitful. Right? Yes. Very true. But it's, a, it's an investigative checklist. That has to be done. It know? does. It, it's it definitely because you never know. You, you might get that diamond in the rough witness that says, yeah. I no, it, it happens. It's just yeah. like, you know what? It was also a procedural thing that I was like, I've never seen in my career uh, this work. And then one shooting it worked. And that was um, one homicide, actually. That was taking down all the license plate numbers of the cars surrounding the crime scene. Yes. And I was like, I've never seen that work. It's so time consuming. And then one murder we had, sure enough. It worked. It worked. The, oh, the wow. Plate, it was from Delaware. They took it down. It was the shooter, you know. And it was from, De- it was a Delaware plate. It was a plate. Delaware plate, yeah. Oh, wow. That's right interesting. outside. It was the 125th in Amsterdam project there. Oh, okay. And it was parked sure. outside there. And I was the only time. In my police career, I ever saw that that procedural thing, right, checklist thing, worked right. and turned and bore fruit. And uh, who the actual shooter was? Wow, that's interesting. I never had. I never had a hit with something like that. Yeah, isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. But you know that you have to do it. 
right? Sure. Yeah. And as a boss, if that's not done when they yeah. read the um, complaint follow ups, the DD fives, yeah. wait a minute. No one ever wrote down, well, how come that wasn't? And you're like, oh my God. Yeah.